If you were to ask me to sum up that loss for the BYU men's basketball program and a golden opportunity, by the way, against Iowa State, I'd probably just send you the gif of Reggie Miller doing the choking motion against the New York Knicks. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you for being everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. This is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU sports. We are brought to you today by our friends over at FanDuel. Make every moment more with FanDuel. New customers join today get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. Think about that. It's $150 to play with. Go to FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. All right, my friends, what a gut punch loss for BYU as they lose 68 to 63 to the Iowa State Cyclones Wednesday night in Ames, Iowa. Congratulations to the Cyclones, their fifth time in program history. They've got undefeated at home. Uh, so congratulations to them. But my biggest concern for this BYU basketball team manifested itself once again Wednesday night. And what is that? It is that BYU, when the pressure gets ratcheted up as high as it can go, when they are uh, got like one hand around their own throat, they have been unable all season long to function in moments like that. Three straight turnovers back to back to back in the final 90 seconds when you were down just one point and just needed to find one basket to take a lead against the number six team in the country. And you fumble it and bumble it and just completely lose control and lose the plot of this game. Brutal. Brutal stuff for the BYU basketball program. And I'm not singling any uh, individual player out because, trust me, this was a team-wide deal for BYU. This is a program that had a 14-point second-half lead on the Iowa State Cyclones and saw that fritter away once again. Think back uh, to them frittering away that double-digit lead against Cincinnati in their first ever Big 12 home game. Think back to the Texas Tech game when BYU was up 16 at halftime and allowed Texas Tech to steamroll them in the second half. Well, yet again, when the pressure, as I mentioned, was the highest, BYU shrunk and was unable to get over the top. Dallin Hall, three critical turnovers. Jackson Robinson, three turnovers. Fusini Traore, four turnovers. On down the list, Ali Khalifa, the guy who doesn't turn the ball over ever, has like an incredible uh, assist-to-turnover ratio. He even had a turnover in this game. Noah Waterman was all over this in this game and just was a non-factor. That fumble, or not the fumble, the, the shuffling of the feet, you could tell he was completely in his own head and just could not get out of his own way. He's not the only one. As I mentioned, BYU felt like they had one hand around their own throats and were unable to kind of yank it away and relieve the pressure. And that is a massive, I mean, a glaring concern for the BYU basketball team as they head towards the postseason. One regular season game remains against the lowly Oklahoma State Cowboys, who BYU did lose to on Saturday at home on senior night for BYU. And then it's the Big 12 tournament. And then, oh, by the way, there's this thing called the Big Dance, the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, where the pressure gets ratcheted up to 150 million degrees, it feels like. And will BYU be able to uh, handle that pressure at that point? Well, the Big 12 is as close, it feels like, just game in and game out to what you're going to get in the postseason. And yet again, BYU is unable to get over the hump and to take what was, uh, I'm telling you, golden, I mean, golden opportunity for BYU to still a win, uh, spoil senior night for a team that was 17-0 at home, and you just you fumbled it away. That is brutal. It is tough to stomach, especially considering BYU just needed one basket. They didn't score in the final four minutes and change of this game. I don't remember what the exact total was, but it was uh, bef it was four minutes plus without a basket in the final stanza of this contest. Man, abysmal. That is that. Th those are the type of games they're going to make you th think back on and say, "What could have been?" Think about this. We'll talk about BYU seeding in the Big Twelve tournament here in a moment, but I'll just say this right now: you can kiss goodbye the double bye into the quarterfinals of that tournament. You needed to win this game against Iowa State to stay in the race for that fourth spot and get the double bye into the quarterfinals. You're going to be playing now in the second round of the tournament, and you had it there for the taking for the BYU basketball program. That is one, I said, the Texas Tech game, the Cincinnati game. There, there, there have been some really high highs for BYU this season. 
none more so than just a week ago when BYU went into Lawrence and looked like the veteran team we all wanted him to be and was able to handle what was a critical, huge moment. And then just a week later, they sink right back to what they have been most of the season. And like I said, when the pressure, when teams pressured them, they seem to fall apart and they crumble under the immense weight of that pressure. And that is a huge, huge concern for this BYU team. I got to give a couple of shout outs though. Richie Saunders continues to be an absolute stud for this BYU basketball team. They're not even in this game without him. He shoots tw uh, seven of 12 from the field in 26 minutes, 20 points, three rebounds, incredible stuff from Richie. Uh, Jackson Robinson, just the only, there was only two players for BYU in double figures in this game. Richie Saunders with 20, leading BYU by a fair uh, margin. And then Jackson Robinson with 11 points in this game. Now, Jackson Robinson didn't necessarily show up in the late uh, stages of this game when you would have liked to him to have had, would you, when you would have liked to him, when you would have liked him to have done that, excuse me, if I can get that out of my mouth. But uh, a couple of you, and trust me, you know who you are, who have been texting back and forth about uh, games like this. When you have moments when you need guys to step up, well, you needed Richie Saunders to step up, and he did so. In the starting lineup, though, Spencer Johnson, Trevin Nell, just too many critical mistakes from otherwise veteran guys. And as I mentioned, a couple of you have been asking me, why are Richie Saunders and Jackson Robinson not in the starting lineup? Well, after tonight's game, there's as strong an argument for that as ever. Even though it's so late in the season, I may consider it if a Mark Pope uh, juggling things and shaking it up a little bit to maybe see if it yields uh, better results in terms of just kind of the the not losing the collective head of the team in big moments like this game. And BYU couldn't have played, honestly, a better first half in this. They build a 14-point lead early on in the second half, and then it just gets carved away by Iowa State. Hilton magic is a real thing. The Hilton Coliseum out there in Ames, Iowa. I, I get all that. But this was a game right there for the taking for the BYU basketball program, and they just could not get it. And that is going to sting. It, it stings. BYU, and it's going to hurt them, honestly, when it comes to NCAA tournament seeding. It's going to cost them in the Big 12 tournament uh, themselves next week. And we'll break all that down as we continue on here momentarily, right here on Locked On Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience with bringing home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive, my friends. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed to fit that ride, your ride, excuse me, every time, or you get your money back. That's the promise they have for you guys because it's eBay Motors. You're burning rubber, not cash, with all the parts at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that victory, my friends. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. It's on eligible items only. Exclusions apply, and eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. But once again, check it out now at ebaymotors.com. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends at Utah Community Credit Union. Now, Utah Community Credit Union has upgraded their checking accounts, uh, enhancing them with more benefits, more savings, and more online protections than ever before. A lot more. Paired with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools, elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle, security, and financial benefits, uh, including free ATMs nationwide, an exclusive discount on any UCCU auto, RV or personal loan, plus an extra 10% cash back on every purchase you make with your UCCU Visa cash back credit card. Think about that. They also have UCCU's credit uh, score toolbox, a state of the art set of tools to help you improve your credit score and enhance your financial well being as well. It's all available to you guys now. The best part is it's free when you do any one of the following use your debit or credit card 15 times or more a month, make a monthly direct deposit of $500 or more, or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500. Otherwise, UCCU's elevated checking is just $6 a month to take advantage of all of these features and a whole lot more. Trust me, the list is expansive. Visit uccu.com to open an elevated checking account online today or stop by any one of their branches in person to open that account right away. It's all courtesy of your friends at UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. I would encourage you guys, if you have not done so already, please consider signing up for our Locked On Cougars Insiders group. I'll be out at BYU football practice again tomorrow. If you want up-to-the-minute updates while I'm standing there on the sidelines watching BYU practice unfold, uh, we've had some game chats of late from these BYU basketball games. I had a, another thing going. I was trying to uh, do two things at once last night, so we didn't have the chat last night. But if you'd like to get up-to-minute updates that come to your phone via text message, 
Join our Locked On Cougars Insider Group and do it at the links uh, below in the show notes. It's a really fun way to interact with the show. It also supports the show financially, and it's just cost you $5 a month, but you do get a 14-day free trial to see if it's the right option for you and appreciate all of you who have uh, joined us over there already. All right, so as I mentioned, this is uh, this loss for BYU is going to cost BYU. Uh, I already kind of spoiled uh, what I was going to talk about here, but BYU can kiss playing, uh, uh, getting a double bye in the Big 12 tournament uh, into the quarterfinals. Uh, goodbye. And that that's that's kind of the doubly tough part. It already hurts to lose that game of that magnitude and do it in the, the fashion that BYU did because, like I said, you fumbled it away and you just you saw a golden opportunity go by the wayside. But now you have lost the opportunity, which would have been to allow yourself to have a, a relatively – easier look at the Big 12 tournament. So as it stands, BYU's best hope now is to finish fifth in the Big 12 in terms of the seeding going into the Big 12 tournament. Now, uh, there are tiebreakers that still need to play out with regards to the standings in the Big 12 and how things will shake out. But uh, this was a game BYU needed to have. They wanted to keep their hopes for that fourth seed alive, but it's not it's not going to work out anymore. So now BYU has to go into the Big 12 tournament, and if they're going to make a run in the Big 12 tournament, you're going to be doing it uphill because you're playing in the second round, then you're into the quarterfinal semis and the finals. You could have to play as many as four games if BYU wants to bring home a Big 12 title. My personal opinion on the matter is, uh, if I'm BYU, why wouldn't you decide, you know what, we're going to go out there, we'll give it our best effort in that first round game, but if it's uh, snug late, maybe they just let, let go of the rope. Maybe you just lose that game and uh, decide that the seating is what it is because – you look at it and the, the, the bracketology for BYU has them sitting it on a five seed line right now. We'll see where uh, guys like Joe Lunardi seed them after this loss to Iowa state, but considering BYU is right there in that game, I don't think it's going to hurt them that bad. It was a quad one game for BYU. It's very clear about that. So it's a quad one loss. So it's one of those quote unquote quality losses. I know that sounds like completely uh, asinine to consider, but it exists. And that's how the, the, the NCAA tournament committee looks at things. And, the best uh, hope for BYU now, as I mentioned, is to get that five seed. But and we did this last week. I was on Locked On Big 12 talking with Drake, and he believes the BYU should just lose immediately in the Big 12 tournament. I have a hard time uh, thinking that BYU should go out there and just kind of just uh, throw the throw the game away because that's a bad look for you to go out there and say, yeah, it doesn't matter. But I can understand some of the wisdom, like uh, just getting yourself out of there and then getting healed up, rested up and getting ready for the big 12, uh, beginning for the ready for the NCAA tournament. The, the tough part was it felt like a BYU were still in the running for that four seed. And as I mentioned, you, you kind of yak that away with this loss to Iowa state. I could see you wanting to say, okay, we got to win three games in that circumstance. If we want to win a big 12 title, and that is far more palatable and easier to do uh, versus four games. And yet again, BYU, I, I'm not, I don't have to chronicle all the history, but the last time BYU won a conference tournament title was back in 2001. It has been 23 years now since BYU last won a conference tournament title. And that's when McKelly Wesley and Steve Cleveland uh, were uh, prowling the BYU sidelines and uh, doing their thing, leading BYU to that Mountain West conference uh, title down there in Las Vegas. So the history for BYU, not necessarily on their side going in uh, to the tournament, but I'd like to see them at least win that first round game and then get into the quarterfinals. And uh, at that point, who are you playing? What are the circumstances? What the bracketology say? And just kind of finesse it. Uh, honestly, I, I don't want you. I don't want BYU to put all their marbles in uh, trying to win a Big 12 title and completely gas themselves in terms of the following week. That they, they, Maybe they make a run to the final, for example. They lose on Saturday in the Big 12 title game. And then the following Thursday, they're completely just gassed. And they'll have, they'll have a few days to recover. I get that. But you don't want them to be emotionally spent going into the NCAA tournament. So I'm, I'm kind of having this internal conflict saying, yeah, I'd like to see BYU do their thing out there in Kansas City. But at the same time, the eye on the prize really is for BYU to go out there and do what they can do in the big dance. The NCAA tournament is what ultimately is where you make your, uh, 
It's where you make your hay. It's where the, the legends are made. It's They're not made in the Big 12 tournament. I, no offense to the Big 12 tournament. No offense to the West Coast or the Mountain West Conference tournaments either. But think about it. What do you think about most when it comes to BYU basketball and the best basketball seasons in program history? It's what happens in March. Danny Ainge going the length of the court to lead them to the Elite Eight. Jimmer Fredette, that iconic photo on Sports Illustrated of him rising over Gonzaga to make that shot and leading them uh, to the Sweet 16 and how they've had Brandon Davies maybe maybe making a run to the Final Four, not to dredge up uh, bad memories, but that is where you really uh, establish yourselves as an also ran for BYU with regards to being remembered as one of those elite teams for BYU versus a first round exit when you maybe have uh, used all of your emotional energy in the Big 12 tournament. And then if you lose in that first round, it's like, well, that was fun, but that sucked. That is the kind of the, the the give and take that is going here for BYU. Yes, I believe that it would be a, a far more palatable situation to make a run at a Big 12 title had they been able to still be in the mix for this four seed. But I honestly think BYU, you go out and handle your stuff in the second round of the, of the Big 12 tournament. And if you uh, crumble and crash out in the quarterfinals, I'm not going to be all that upset about it. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm actually becoming around to more of what Drake was talking about when it comes to just, just get out of there and get rested up and get ready for the NCAA tournament. Cause that, like I said, is where you really establish yourselves. If you're, if you talk about like the great all time teams for BYU, this has been a marvelous big 12 season for them. It's one of the great seasons in BYU basketball history, considering the expectations versus what they've accomplished so far. But if you go out and lose in the first round of this game, you're going to be forgotten about. You're not going to be remembered like the Jimmer Fredettes, like the Danny Ainges, like the um, even that 2020 team that got the NCAA tournament took an, taken away from them because of the COVID pandemic. They're remembered uh, for the what if. What if they had actually been able to play in that tournament? This tournament uh, for BYU is going to happen, barring something completely unforeseen. But if you crash out in the first round, remember, there were some Steve Cleveland teams, the Gary Bohannon game when they lost to Syracuse in the first round. Do we talk about some of those teams as being some of the great teams in BYU basketball history? Not really, because they didn't do anything in the postseason. That's where it really matters. So we'll see how BYU handles things. I, I'm assuming the players, this is just my personal mindset. Uh, speaking of me saying, hey, just, just get out of there and get rested up. We're going to talk with BYU coaches and players today, a media availability set for about 1.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And we'll uh, get a gauge of what Mark Pope and the, the team are feeling right now as they get ready for senior night against Oklahoma State. And by the way, that's another thing about this. We'll, and we'll preview Oklahoma State more in depth on tomorrow's podcast. But you can't let go of the rope uh, against Oklahoma State. You've got to be able to handle your business and show that you have the the prowess and the mindset of okay we can still bounce back and handle Oklahoma State and then worry about the Big 12 tournament but I think that this loss against Iowa State completely changes the mindset at least for me when it comes to how I would approach the Big 12 tournament but We'll see. Uh, BYU's got a team of competitors. I get that. And we'll see how they ultimately fare out there in Kansas City. But first things first, handle your business against Oklahoma State. Get some payback for that loss out there at Gallagher-Iger in Stillwater and show Oklahoma State what it's all about to come to Provo and play in the Marriott Center. And by the way, keep a very big streak, uh, not big streak, but an important uh, streak for BYU. When they've lost a game in the Big 12, they have routinely bounced back and won the next game. Don't let this be when you fumble it away yet again and lose this one because this would be a really tough one to go into the Big 12 tournament on the heels of back-to-back -back losses to close out the season, and it is senior night. That's the other thing about this. You don't want to uh, have the bad juju of all of that carrying you as you get ready for Kansas City the following week. All right, uh, coming up here in a minute, we'll finish up today's show on a more uh, light note, and that is that apparently all these years later, San Diego State just cannot, I mean, cannot let go of BYU. BYU, when we had this term in high school, we called it the Dome Zone. BYU is absolutely in the domes of the collective media. I don't know what it is in the water down there in San Diego, but BYU re remains. It remains their like, one thing that they just cannot get over. We'll talk about what happened coming up next right here on Locked on Cougars. 
Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Uh, the best part is whether it's uh, the opening weekend for baseball upcoming or the college basketball tournament, which is about to begin as well, you're going to want to have a Fire TV if you don't have one already. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands and they do it all for free that includes all of us here at the locked on podcast network and most of the pro big uh, big pro leagues as well as the college conferences as well the big 12 right in the mix as well fire tv channels that should dive into the game analysis highlights and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports march madness nba mlb and lots more i've told you guys that locked on sports today our 24 7 streaming channel it is available now on amazon fire tv so take advantage of it today and check out march madness the nba mlb and a whole lot more with our friends at Fire TV, not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos. They've got it all for you guys, simply put. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you have not checked out our Fire TV channels, you should ch- trust me and do it today. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Once again, check them out today. Amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of your patronage and all the support over the years. I need to be better about this, but if you have not done so already, if you're a first-time listener or recently have found the podcast, please subscribe to it, whether you're watching this on YouTube or listening wherever you get your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the like. Uh, please subscribe to the show. And then also, uh, please like this show on YouTube. Hit the little like button. I'm pointing to it here. Uh, and also enable notifications if you've not done so already. So when a new episode drops, you'll be able to catch it right away. And then also, also, on our the regular podcast feeds out there, Apple and Spotify in particular, please leave us a rating and review. It uh, gets the algorithms thinking that Locked On Cougars is a bigger deal than it is. And we're a, we're a decent sized deal, but I uh, would like to continue to grow, obviously. And your guys' help in doing that would be very, very critical. And also, uh, we have some uh, advertising slots coming available here very, very quickly. So if you'd like to advertise with Locked On Cougars, have success in the uh, podcast advertising sphere and uh, get your product, your company, whatever whatever you've got out there to thousands of BYU fans on a daily basis, uh, reach out to us, LockedOnBYU at gmail.com. We'll get you in contact with a Locked On sales team and get you on the path to advertising success, excuse me, in uh, the podcast sphere. So once again, LockedOnBYU at gmail.com if you are interested in doing anything like that. All right, folks, San Diego State, for whatever reason, has got this um, complex, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Uh, I'm not a psychology major, nor did I study psychology. But San Diego State, there is something about BYU that is just stuck in the heads of literally everybody uh, involved with San Diego State, it appears. And what I mean by that is, I don't know if you guys saw this late, uh, uh, to be would have been uh, Tuesday night, and I, I missed it live. And I saw it uh, as I was getting ready uh, to watch BYU and uh, Iowa State play. And on a night where it was a tough loss for BYU, you know, you a little levity to make your life a little bit uh, better. Well, uh, Mark Ziegler, who works for the San Diego Union Tribune, he is a credentialed media uh, personality, a sports writer, has been on the beat uh, covering San Diego State for years. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he was out here in November when BYU and San Diego State played at the Marriott Center. So he is familiar with Provo. Uh, but uh, Tuesday night, apparently uh, he had a bone to pick uh, with BYU, even though BYU had no involvement whatsoever in the game that he was covering. Uh, so let's just uh, start off with this. Now, uh, the biggest thing uh, for uh, San Diego State is this all kind of goes back to remember when the the Jimmer Fredette, Kawhi Leonard led teams were going head to head in the 2010, 2011 season. Uh, and there were some legendary, I mean, legendary performances uh, in those games. And there was a San Diego state writer. I, I don't think it was Ziegler who uh, claimed that walking down the streets of Provo, Utah was akin to walking down the streets of Birmingham in the 1950s when the civil rights uh, thing was going on. It was crazy. Some of the insinuations being made by San Diego state. Well, all these years later, we're talking more than a decade later, uh, and a game that once again, a uh, San Diego state, they lost to UNLV on Tuesday night, 62 to 58. Well, Mark Ziegler decides to put this on the internet. And Oh, by the way, didn't just put it on social media. He put it on Twitter and then also decides to put it in print in his game story. He says the following quote, 
FYI, the ref who just teed up Brian Dutcher is Mike Littlewood, dot, 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 the former BYU baseball coach. Given San Diego State's history with BYU and questionable officiating decisions, remember Fumblegate? Why in the world would he be assigned to an SDSU game? And this is his fifth of the season, which he actually clarified later, is the sixth, the tied for the most, apparently, uh, of officials that have worked San Diego State games. Mark, dude, are you kidding me? You're a credentialed media member. You're going to impugn that BYU holds some sway over Mike Littlewood, who, by the way, resigned midseason in 2022 amidst some really, really weird circumstances. A BYU baseball coach, a, a, a program he was very excited to leave because, by the way, he played for BYU baseball. He didn't, I don't think he necessarily wanted to leave BYU. But for you to say that this guy who used to work for BYU left under less than clear circumstances uh, from Brigham Young University in a game that BYU has no involvement with, you're going to claim that BYU has some sway over what happened in this game? Bro, come on now. We can be better about this. This is, this is like... What what are we doing here? Honestly, what are we doing here? If we're having sports writers uh, claim that BYU has sway over this. By the way, this is not the first time that this quote unquote accusation or I don't know, insinuation has been levied, by the way. Earlier this season, Utah fans went in on Mike Littlewood uh, after uh, he uh, refed a game against Utah that they lost. B.J. Reigns from uh, Boise State also made a similar type comment uh, in a game that Boise State had uh, some questionable calls in. Guys, if BYU really uh, dominates that much in y'all's head, wow. BYU's got a lot more hold and a lot more sway than a lot of you think. Because, by the way, if anybody did any shred of uh, just research on Mike Littlewood, you would realize that this guy has already been honored uh, by, he's in what they call it, it's the Officials Hall of Honor, which is also sponsored by the Utah High School Athletics Associ Activities Association. Uh, he is one of the, he was, uh, let me be clear about this, before taking the job at BYU in 2013 as, uh, as the BYU baseball head coach. For 16 years before that, he was an NCAA basketball referee, officiating in seven NCAA tournaments, three su Sweet 16s, and two Elite Eights. He is a very, very capable basketball official. And that has nothing, I mean, zero to do with him having worked at BYU. This is, this is insane. For you as a sports writer, and let me be very clear. If I ever, I'm, I'm saying this right now to all y'all watching and or listening to this. If I ever try and draw a line between some guy who may have had some shred of a connection with a university that is officiating a game that that university is not involved with, and then I'm trying to kind of grasp at straws as to a reason why the team I'm covering, in this case, BYU loses a game, roast me, fillet me, just burn me to the ground on social media for making such an egregious outlandish claim. This is just insane. Come on, Mark, you're better than this. And by the way, it is still up as of uh, me recording this podcast at 10, 19 PM mountain time on a Wednesday evening. I don't know what to say. That is just insane. San Diego state, dude, the show has had a bone to pick with BYU for years. They're it's their, it's their, uh, what they're, they're, uh, that's the equivalent of the rock, the BYU student section It's San Diego state student section. I mean, it's called the show. They've had a bone to pick with, for, with BYU over multiple things. Even when BYU is not directly involved with anything, San Diego state, but for a sports writer, a credentialed sports writer to use this. And once again, like it's not the first time this season. Like I said, Utah has done it. Boise State has done it. And I'm, I'm uh, maybe I've missed one, missing one or two others. Mike Littlewood is not a BYU honk. Let's be clear about this. He worked NCAA tournaments well before his time at BYU. And oh, by the way, when he was working at BYU, he wasn't an on court official. He was that uh, we call him like the NCAA officiating evaluators or. I don't know what they do. They grade the officials. They go back, watch games, and grade the officials on the court. He did that the entire time he worked at BYU as the BYU baseball head coach. And then since leaving BYU, he's gotten back onto the court as an official. And I just, this is, this is baffling that this would be something that Mark Ziegler would decide first off to tweet in the first place and then to put it into your game story for the San Diego Union Tribune. I am frankly stunned that his editors or anybody involved uh, wouldn't have said, Mark, 
do we really need to do this here? Because he, he did say that in the six games that Littlewood has worked this season, San Diego State is three and three in them. Bro, BYU is not involved in any of those games, by the way. Uh, and if Mike Littlewood were to have worked a game, let's say let's say the San Diego State and BYU earlier this season, Mike Littlewood is officiating that game. Okay, I get then it's a little bit questionable because of the ties between Mike Littlewood and uh, BYU. But this is months months removed from the game between BYU and San Diego State. It involves the UNLV running Rebels and the San Diego State Aztecs. And BYU is that much in your dome that you're going to... I'm going to repeat an oft-quoted phrase on ESPN from Randy Moss. Come on, man. We can do better than this, Mark. Be better than this. That was just... You gotta make you gotta you gotta have something uh, positive to come out of what was a gut punch loss for BYU basketball, and Mark Ziegler from the San Diego Union Tribune, I think he delivered that in spades. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop now because that just it's mind blowing. Honestly, I I cannot believe that he would decide to run with something like that. But hey. That's where we're at. All right. We will wrap up today's show on that note. Come back tomorrow. Get you ready for senior night for BYU and Oklahoma State. We'll have a better feel after our talk with BYU players and coaches at media availability this afternoon. And then also we'll talk some BYU football as well as they ha- as they will be uh, going into practice number five of their spring period. I uh, will be out there later on tomorrow afternoon. So if you want those updates when I'm out there at BYU, uh, excuse me, coming up on Friday, excuse me, that, that will obviously uh, tomorrow. Duh, I'm all over the place. But nonetheless, one of those updates, join a Locked On Cougar insider group and we'll have you covered uh from top to bottom and uh buffoonery like uh mark ziegler as well will also uh be lampooned as well all right that's gonna do it i jeez I, I need to wrap this up before i say this something uh buffoonish myself but nonetheless thank you for making lockdown cougars your first listen of the day thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us as well and until tomorrow my friends this has been the locked on cougars podcast <laughs>